Go, 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 let's get it I'm a trapping fanatic, that shit automatic So I cannot turn it on or off okay. Bitches all on my dick, then she hop on my dick I'm like, why you keep hopping on and off? Your bitch all on my dick, she be doing the most I tell her little bitch, so extra Am my gun up on me, but I run up on me Niggas, they wanna fight, they some wrestlers with his eyes being revealed to have some sort of ability, Isagi then scans the field while smiling. There's no one that can stop me now. Looking around, Isagi is able to scan each player to their current potential on the field, with no one even being close to 100%, let alone 50. He then looked up, and the game continued, with Team Z heading down the field. They actually began passing it around, but Kunigami, their striker, would miss his next shot as Baru guarded him close, leading to him, well, leading to the shot, hitting the goalpost, and then being rebounded by Batra, who just barely grabs it before it goes out. He looks up, breaking the ankles of one defender, and then he sees it, an opportunity for success. He sends it out toward the wing of the opposite side, where Isagi was wide open. Watching the ball fall into place, Isagi states it's impressive, that he can even get off a pass like that at his level. With defenders turning his way, he chooses to not settle the ball at all as that would just waste time. Performing a direct volley, the win from it alone leaves the goalkeeper stunned as he could barely see it, let alone block it. Now, with that being out of the way, Team Z would understand that Isagi must have been given rank 300 on accident. As with that, the match's continuation, well, let's just say that the teams would trade goals evenly, but Baru is stopped by a combined effort of Raichi and then Gagamaru, once realizing how good they were. Well, it became easier to stop the Tyrant King, leading to them winning their first match by one goal, making the score 5-4, to four, as now they could celebrate for a little bit, while also having a team meeting, because Ego does give them hints about talents and their weapons that will be needed in this selection. They sit in a room discussing their weapons, but when it's time for Isagi's turn, he's silent. Then he says it's his shooting power and accuracy. They go along with it, but before the next match, Kira confronts Isagi in a training room. Why did you lie about your abilities? Isagi pays him no attention, stating that they're all fools. Eventually, the team, well, they may turn into opponents, so why reveal what he can actually do? He allows them to think that this is his weapon, for future reference, so he can surprise them with another if he chooses to. Kira actually cuts him off, saying that it's his eyes, as Isagi can somehow envision the field differently than others. But Isagi shrugs this off, and he then walks away but says, I don't think you could say it's a weapon. It just happens to be in my possession. It's like if I give a kid a knife. Sure, it's a weapon, but what could they really do besides harm themselves? Whereas if I give a fully trained assassin a katana, they might do things that are unimaginable. Hearing those cold words, Kira is somehow reminded of Ego, but he forgets this quickly, and then Team 7 would later be seen stepping onto the field the next day to see their new opponents, as it would be Team Y. Isagi looks around, not impressed at all, and then gets into formation with his team, as this is where they notice something, that Isagi's rank had went up, as well as his position, because he had changed to striker. Anri comments that even though Ego doesn't care for this player at all, he's quite impressive. Ego here actually turns to the screen looking at his son, He's almost pathetic, and then sits back down, turning away from Anri, but giving a slight smirk. The match then kicks off with Team Y passing the ball around from player to player. This strategy was kind of annoying, and it was kind of a keep away strategy that began to work until Isagi shouted for his team to just man mark a player in the midfield. With that, Team Y was forced to pass in their defense. Suddenly, Okawa made his move, cutting across the field, and Nico looks up as he was receiving a pass. Kira sees this and suddenly went to Mark Okawa, reeling that this is why they waited for so long, but he's a step behind him, saying that it might be too late. But a loud thud is heard, as he looks back, seeing Isagi slide right in front of Nico, bodying him off the ball. 
the thud that they heard was Nico's body dropping to the ground. Those eyes of yours are truly pathetic. Isagi now was wide open and scores the first goal of the match, claiming that this cowardly tactic can't work at all. As Kira is dumbfounded, but the rest of the team can't help but celebrate. Isagi was incredible, but just how could he predict this so easily? With their plan being found out and their team being much weaker, Team Y is obliterated by Team Z's offensive players like Kunigami, Chigiri, who will tap into his speed in this match instead of the next one, Bachira, and Isagi. It's funny because as Isagi continues to show off more and more of his progress, his teammates believe that this is the fruit of his labor and his training. But these were only the results from his past training, not anything that he's been doing inside of Blue Lock. In a way, think of it how Goku from Dragon Ball paces himself as a battle goes on. In a way, Isagi is pacing himself in each of his matches, just revealing small bits and pieces of his true strength as a striker. With another win under their belt, Team Z was undefeated in the facility as of now and was still on a high horse, which caused some of them to develop better confidence in their abilities. However, Kira remained cautious of Isagi. Just what was he really up to? Kira decides to follow him and actually train with Isagi. From what he gets, he doesn't do anything out of the ordinary. His diet is balanced. His training isn't too hard or too easy. Everything feels so normal. Until, stepping onto the pitch with him, Isagi then asked, If Kira wished to play one-on-one, -on -one, it's clear that he wants to truly understand the difference in their strength. And there's only one real way to do that. Kira nods, and Isagi gives him possession first. Alright, he's strong, I know that. And he's a good defender, because he stole the ball from Baru and Nico. My only chance to win against him is to do something unorthodox. He wouldn't expect this, so I'll take him head on. Kira then rushes in forward, and goes to dribble, but he's cut off at every angle. Then, he goes for a shot, but Isagi steps in the way putting all his cards into this block. But Kira smirks, saying that this is where he wins, faking the shot and going in the opposite direction. He thinks he's wide open, but Isagi, under his breath, calls this hilarious. He spins, blocking the shot and stealing possession of the ball. You know, that might have worked against anyone else, and you could have pulled that off. But not on me. Isagi now dribbles the ball into open space, heading forward. Towards the opposite goal, Kira then chases after him while thinking, but then it clicks with him. Wait a minute, why did I just now realize this? Isagi doesn't dribble the ball fast at all. It's almost as if the ball is slowing him down. Kira catches up with him and actually cuts him off and goes for a steal, but Isagi dodges it and then moves around Kira, but his opponent is able to stay with him just for a little bit. I'm not done yet. Kira then turns his body, going in for a steal, but as it looks like it's close, Isagi then states, neither is he. He then rips a shot so strong that it would knock Kira to the ground as it goes into the net. You know, you're quite fun to toy with, but I've grown bored of this. Just make sure you're ready for the next match. Kira, while sitting on the ground, tries to think of what just happened in that split moment. As he replays it in his mind, Isagi somehow bodied him off the ball with brute strength, but they were about the same size even though Isagi was taller. But that strength, it was unreal, as Isagi doesn't even look like the strong type. The next day, or a couple days later, the team is seen gathering on the field to face their next opponents, Team W and their formidable twins, that may pose a threat due to how they could sync up on the field. Team W actually starts with the ball, but it's stolen by Raichi and Kira. Isagi was then seen heading up the field, as it would be marked by both of the twins. Team Z at first works around this, as it leaves others open. Chigiri heads down the side, giving a cross to Bachira, who would score the first goal, but this kind of looks like it infuriates Isagi. With a certain look on his face, the twins believe that they got under his skin, but through it all, Isagi begins to laugh. Oh man. This is quite hilarious. You two really believe that this is how you'll beat me? Well then, let me show you something. 
When the game resumes, one of the twins is in locked down by Isagi's defense and has the ball stolen from him. Isagi then begins to head up the field with a similar speed to Chigiri, which causes Kira to stop and question himself if Isagi was holding back during their own training. With the other twin cutting him off, Isagi looks up with a crazy look in his eyes. What's wrong? Don't tell me that you're scared. Isagi's aura intensifies as it causes hesitation between the player in front of him. This allows Isagi to blow by him and look towards the keeper. Still, three defenders block his path and his shot. All of you are just pathetic. Isagi stops and curves the high shot around the defenders as it goes into the top corner of the goal out of the goalkeeper's reach. His teammates shout in excitement, surrounding him, as this was some sort of super goal. Isagi simply wipes his face, telling his opponents to come up with a new strategy to defeat him, because this one has too many flaws that he can see through. As this is when we get a look into his eyes once again, with Ego watching him on the screen, having a similar look in his face. As we then see both father and son sharing similar thoughts in this moment. But this is where I'll end part two, as I hope you guys have really enjoyed it. And I kind of do like the pacing that I have for this story so far, because it gives you guys an opportunity to put your own input down in the comments that I read. Plus, I just like it for my series to go for a little bit longer. But my name is Zero, and if you guys want to see more content like this on my channel, just make sure you subscribe. And I'll catch you all on the next one.